Supreme Chancellor Obi Wan Kenobi by Stone Freak. Chapter 53 Anakin Gets the News. General Skywalker, we have an incoming transmission from Coruscant, Rex says, standing straight and with his arms crossed behind his back, stiff and formal. Anakin's eyes narrow. That kind of posture generally means a transmission from the council. There's a turning in the pit of Anakin's stomach, and he still feels the echoes of the Force screaming. He's tried not to think about it, but now he can't help the thought that keeps spinning in his mind. Has something terrible happened? I'll come immediately, Captain. He nods to Rex and turns to his Padawan. Ahsoka, you take over the attack coordination. I should be back soon. Yes, Master, she says and nods in return before she turns back to the hollow maps of the SAR system and closes planets. And again sets a fast pace toward the communication center, but Rex, as always, keeps up. Rex, who can I expect? He might as well make sure he has as much information as possible before he takes the con. Preparation is key, as Obi-Wan likes to say. It's General Windu, sir. From how we looked, it appears to be both very urgent and extremely important. Anakin blinks and his stomach drops. Well, that doesn't sound good. Master Windu being wound up enough to not be the picture of... Sometimes grumpy. Stoicism? Anakin can admit to himself that's not entirely fair to Master Windu, but it's true a lot of the time, especially for more serious or formal occasions. So if this is a serious and or formal occasion and Master Windu is visibly disturbed... Something must be very wrong. Could it actually be something to do with the Force crying out? The walk to the communication hub isn't long, and it barely takes them a minute to get there, but it still somehow feels as if it takes forever. The door slides open, and Anakin immediately sees Master Windu's hollow, arms crossed, and with a grave expression on his face. There seems to be an almost grim edge to his facial expression that Anakin has very rarely seen before and only in the most serious situations. Master Windu, I came as fast as I could, Anakin says with a nod as soon as he steps within hollow cam range. But Captain Rex said it was urgent. He tilts his head slightly towards Rex on his right. Night, Skywalker, Master Windu says, inclining his head. The captain is correct. We cannot delay this calm and risk you hearing these news from any other source. Anakin's stomach drops further. That... <laughs> That can't be good at all. Has something happened? Anakin crosses his arms behind his back to make sure Master Windu can't see the way his fingers clench on his arms. A nervous tick. Master Windu's eyes close and he nods. Several bombs went off in the office of Senator Biwa, the moon Ili Ilan. It looks, if possible, even grimmer. There was an attack on the Senate. When? Before Anakin can continue, Master Windu cuts him off. Swiftly, but not rudely. In fact, he simply seems to want to stop Anakin from spiraling into asking questions he was already planning on answering. It happened just about one standard hour ago. It happened just about one standard hour ago. So far, the only confirmed deaths are Senator Biwa himself and Senator Himesh of Salon 3. Beyond them, six people were injured, however. Master Windu pauses briefly. Anakin's thoughts are already running wild. What about Pemi? Is she safe? Has she been hurt? And what about Obi-Wan? He's in the Senate office building a lot, too. Is he safe? Master Windu seems to almost steal himself. Master Kenobi. Obi-Wan was in that office. He says softly, gently. Anakin's thoughts grind to a halt. What? No. No, he can't have. He can't be. Only two confirmed casualties. Neither of them Obi-Wan. He reminds himself. Is he... Is he okay? Anakin tries to keep the urgency out of his voice, tries to keep calm, but he can feel his heartbeat pick up. Obi-Wan is on Coruscant. He should be safe there. His condition is critical. Master Windu's words hit Anakin like a sledgehammer to the head. The healers don't know if he will make it or not yet. But they got to him quickly, thanks to the troopers he brought with him to the meeting. Breathe. Breathe! Anakin tries to keep it together, tries to remind himself to breathe, but it suddenly feels almost impossibly hard. He has to breathe. He has to calm down and breathe. He gets jolted out of his fixating thoughts by Rex's shoulder suddenly connecting with his, and he manages to draw a deep, shuddering breath in through his nose. 
he glances to his captain slightly and nods his thanks the panic is not gone but it has abated slightly he is not alone he quickly realizes that master windu has been waiting silent while anakin collected himself what what are my orders he chokes out he wants to rush back to Coruscant immediately he needs to be with obi-wan he can't lose him like this he can't not now but obi-wan obi-wan would want him to at least ask what his orders are first and what if they want him to investigate the attempt and he fucks it up by rushing ahead and they never find out who did this he can't he can't well if you think you can keep your mind on the battle ahead of you without destruction stay where you are and complete your mission however if you do not think you can do so withdraw your troops and return to coruscant may the path is open to you master windu's eyes open and stare at anakin's the only thing you absolutely may not do is leave your troops behind and return to Coruscant alone. Is... is this a test? And it's my choice. If he returns to Coruscant, will he fail whatever test this is? Are they lying about what happened to test him? Is that what this is? Some form of test to see if he will let his attachments interfere with his missions? Palpatine has always said that the Council doesn't trust Anakin as they should. Have they decided to test him? The mission you're on is not time-sensitive enough that rerouting a different part of the army would be unfeasible. We would lose more if you fail because you pushed yourself than if you retreat and let someone else take over. Master Undali and her troops are in a nearby system awaiting orders. Moving them to your position would not cause a significant delay. And again nods slowly. That... that makes sense. But... What should he do? If Obi-Wan is... is... then Anakin should be there, shouldn't he? As if sensing Anakin's hesitation, despite the incredible distance between them, Master Windu speaks up again. You do not have to answer immediately. Take a few hours to gather your thoughts, and discuss the situation with your better one and captain. He pauses and sighs. If there's any change in the situation, we'll get in contact with you again. And again nods mutely. Time to think. Take time to think. Yes, good. Un Anakin. Master Windu's tone is gentle, his face worried. Consider your feelings and your state of mind carefully, but don't forget to consider your Padawan's situations as well. And again blinks. Breathes. Tries to remember the last time Master Windu called him by his first name. The silence stretches and Anakin realizes with a twitch that Master Windu might be waiting for a vocal confirmation. I'll get back to you within three hours, Master Windu. He croaks and clears his throat. May the force be with you. Master Windu's eyes look a million stars away. May the force be with us all, my Skywalker. His hollow disappears and Anakin stands there staring where the hologram once was and tries to keep breathing. Without Master Windu's hollow in front of him, Anakin finds himself anchorless. Obi-Wan might die. Anakin could lose him. It's not fair! He can't lose Obi-Wan now! Not now when Anakin finally knows for sure that Obi-Wan cares, has always cared. If he didn't know, he'd take it better. But now? Now? The air seems thick, hard to breathe. He recognizes the feeling from another time he received news that turned everything upside down. The sounds of the hub seem far away or distorted, as if Anakin were underwater. He clutches at his face and gasps for breath. He feels uncountably vulnerable with his back bare as it is. There's no Obi-Wan to have his back, no master to place a warm palm on his back and give a small smile. There's no best friend, brother, father, everything to help him this time. His back hits the wall and he slides down to a sitting position. He can't breathe. Obi-Wan isn't here. Obi-Wan can't help. Anakin can't breathe. The news hit like a blaster bolt to the chest, and Rex can see his general's face drain of blood and turn almost ash on. Rex keeps a close eye on him the rest of the holocaust, but luckily he only needs to get his mind back to the present with a gentle shoulder nudge once. Cody. Rex grits his teeth and tries to keep calm, but his thoughts keep turning to his brother, 
his brother who had to leave his Jedi behind and go into the field alone. And now said Jedi might die. Cody will be devastated. He'll blame himself. Rex closes his eyes and breathes deeply. He wishes he could be there when Cody gets the news, if only to be a shoulder for him to lean on, a grounding familiar presence. Rex has seen many brothers lose their Jedi over the course of this war, has seen them get crushed in a way Rex can't really explain. It's as if they see their Jedi's death as their personal failure and crack like the dry earth under the heat of an unforgiving sun. But there's more than just Cody that weighs on Rex's mind. It's the knowledge that General Kenobi's state will have far-spread consequences on the troops, not just in the 212, but throughout the whole army, and on Rex's own general and commander. If General Kenobi dies, Rex doesn't want to consider it. Cody isn't here. Rex can't not be there for his brother. But he can be there for his general and his commander. And knowing his general, he will need it, if only as a calming influence to keep him from flying off the handle to go hunting for whoever planted those bombs. The call ends and Rex awaits orders. No doubt will General Skywalker leap into action either to find the commander to tell her the news or to tell Rex about his decision. To Rex's surprise, however, the general doesn't move at first. Instead, he stands still, his hands slowly creeping up towards his face, until they clutch at it with a grip so harsh the skin around his fingers turn white, as his breathing grows heavy and ragged. Rex watches as he staggers backwards until his back hits the wall of the command center and he slides down to the floor. What in all the core worlds? Rex has seen this behavior before in some brothers who suddenly couldn't cope with the battlefield before. It had been whispered throughout the army because telling someone other than clone medics is unthinkable if the Kaminoans ever heard of it. Well, those brothers would be considered defective and not something no other trooper wants to even think about. Rex moves slowly to his general's side, unwilling to startle him. He glances around the room, but the command center had been mostly empty before Rex took his post and none of the brothers working are looking this way, so at least the general has some privacy. General, is there anything I can do to help? He says, speaking softly enough that the words shouldn't carry across the room. Rex is pretty sure that the last thing General Skywalker needs is to be crowded right now. General Skywalker shakes his head jerkily, almost as if he barely has control of the motion. Obi-Wan is... Obi-Wan is... He gasps, breath hitching. While Rex would have expected the news to hit hard, he hadn't expected this. He'd expected his general's anger to search for a fitting target. He'd expected his general's fierce determination to search for whoever was responsible. But he hadn't expected a panic attack. Is there anything I could do, general? Rex murmurs again, deliberately keeping his face smooth to avoid wincing in sympathy for his general's harsh, fitful breaths. Rex wishes Kix was here. The medic would probably know what to do, how to help. Breathe. The general gasps, one hand now clawing at his chest, the other still clutching at his face with a white knuckle grip. Breathe? Rex isn't sure what that means. He can tell that the general's breathing is harsh and erratic. That much is obvious, but in the context of if there's something Rex can do for him, Yes, General, I can see you're having trouble breathing, Rex says, creeping slightly closer to his general. For a brief moment, Rex wishes the commander was here. Maybe she wouldn't know what to do. Maybe she's seen the general like this before. His train of thought is cut off as General Skywalker's hand, the one that isn't clutching at his face, reaches out and almost slaps against his chest plate in a movement so fast Rex's eyes can't track it. He looks down at the hand lying flat against his chest, Fingers splayed as it twitches slightly before he looks back at General Skywalker. However, he isn't looking at Rex at all. In fact, his eyes seem fixed on his own hand. Rex frowns and makes an aborted attempt to scratch his head, deciding instead that perhaps it's best if he remains still and exactly where he is. The General's breathing starts slowing down and the whites around his eyes become less prominent. Slowly, his fingers relax and stop gouging into his cheek. That's when it clicks. 
Rex looks down at the hand on his chest again, and the slight way it moves with Rex's own breathing. Is the general using his hand as a focus to match his breathing to Rex's own? Deciding to test his theory, Rex allows his own breathing to slow and deepen, making the slight movement of his chest plate more pronounced. The general's breathing patterns start to follow. So that was what he was trying to ask of Rex when he said, breathe, before he wanted to create a focus to help him calm his breathing. Which makes Rex wonder if the general has previous experience with this, and why he hasn't told Rex about it. While he respects his general's need for privacy, this is the kind of important information that could be the difference between death and life on a battlefield. Rex purses his lips and decides he'll talk to General Skywalker about it later. Right now, there are other things that require their immediate attention. However, as soon as General Skywalker has calmed down and made his decision regarding the mission, 